everybody. Hi, it's Becky from PowerToolsWithThread.com. That's my blog. I am getting ready to do the stitch along, embroider along, for the Sweet Pea Christmas Cross and Flowers. I just finished the very top portion of the design. There are a total of four panels and this is the top one. I did this one in the single needle and trimmed the applique while it was in the hoop and that is for the very beginner embroiderer who might be a little intimidated by the machine this video series is going to go step by baby step for you so that you can join us in this sew along now this video is on the single needle the brother luminaire I am going to do all of the other videos for it on the Brother PR 1055 multi-needle and that is for my multi-needle viewers. This project is going to be a lot of fun and it turns out absolutely gorgeous. I have got links below every video to all of the products that are used, the fabric, the glitter fabric, everything that I am using I have got below the video and that way if you want yours to look like mine you can get those and have it look the same. So this first video if you're very new to embroidery whether you have a single needle or a multi needle there are a lot of things that go on during this video. I know it's an hour long but there are a lot of things that go on that um, might be a hiccup or a boo-boo or something like that and I'm going to show you how to work around that and how to overcome it and those techniques apply no matter whether you're using a single needle or a multi needle so the three video series is this one for panel number one part two will be panels two and three because they are pretty much the same and then part four will be panel number four and finishing all right you guys let's get started and get this beautiful wall hanging going I wanted to show you how to hoop if you are using a standard embroidery hoop you might notice on your hoop regardless of your machine brand you're gonna have some markings on the inner and outer ring this one has tiny little arrows on it so that tells me what direction the inner hoop needs to go so you may want to look on your hoop and see if there are marks some of them based on the brand they can only go one way this is a, a brother embroidery hoop this is the six by ten and so it matters which way this goes i don't get all hung up on math or anything like that when it comes to exact measurements for stabilizer this is a uh, this is a new product by Dime. It's their stabilizer boxes, and I really like this. I put a sticker on here that says No Show Poly Mesh. These will hold 12 inch rolls, and it's got a little slider bar down here at the bottom. It's very cool. And a trick to, I'll put a link to this below, but a trick to loading it is to load it, put this in upside down like this, and kind of pull it through. And load it like that and then take the bottom and put it over the top it's a little bit easier than trying to put it in the bottom and wedge the the this down inside of there so i'm just going to put my hoop this direction because it is a 12 inch wide you can see if i pull it this way it doesn't catch in the top or the bottom so i'm going to do my hoop this way and i'm going to put the little tightening screw down here at the end and I'm just going to pull this until this is just covering this end down here and it's covering this end right here I've got about an extra inch up here by the box okay and you can put the box up if you want I'm just going to pull it over this just makes everything nice and neat and I'm just going to move this I'm going to put this where you can see it okay and I'm just going to push the slider over. Hold it on either side for a little tension, makes it easy. And that's it. So it's all nice and neat in the box. I love this. You all can hear Darla zipping around in the background. She's stitching out that Christmas cross and flowers. Okay, so you want to open your hoop up pretty wide. 
and take the inner ring out. This is real hard, you guys, okay? <laughs> you want to cover top, bottom, side to side, everything. Put it back in. I usually kind of push the nose in first, then the bottom. Make sure it's nice and smooth. Tug it a little bit if you want and tighten the screw. That's it. On this particular design for the Christmas cross and flowers, it does not matter. You can recess it a little bit too. It does not matter. We don't need any kind of grid or cr crosshair marking or anything like that because the digitizer has already determined exactly where everything is going to stitch and where it's going to be placed. So that's how easy it is. Hear that? That's how easy it is to hoop. You may want to use a screwdriver if you've got arthritic fingers and um, tighten this up as good as you can, okay? Hope that was helpful. So I wanted to do this sew along for the Sweet Pea Christmas Cross and Flowers. I am gonna be making the six by 10. In, a, in the video where I show how to download the design and what to do and all that as far as digitally, I said I was gonna make the seven by 12. So I have printed out all of the fabric requirements for the six by 10. I copied them from the PDF and pasted them into a new Word document and then just printed that out. And that's one of the things I recommend. There are three different sizes in the pattern and you wanna be careful to only look at what you need. It's really easy to accidentally look at a different size and then cut your fabric wrong. So to prevent that, I copied and pasted what I needed into a new Word document and printed that out. And I normally will go ahead and use my tablet. I don't print out the whole document, but I use my tablet and I pull up the instructions on my tablet. This is four panels. It's really very simple. For me, I'll need an eight by 12 piece. I'm gonna use this fabric. This is from J Wrecker Frisch and I, I love it. It's got sewing things on it and it has biblical messages inside of it. So I thought it was perfect for a Christmas cross. And then I am using that glitter. This is a glitter, it's not vinyl, it's like a pleather. This is from Sweet Pea, it's very sparkly. Even though I am making the six by 10, I don't have a magnetic hoop that is smaller than the nine and a half by 14. So let me get that. If I was making it on the road, I would be using the six by 10 hoop. I just happen to have this big ginormous hoop here. You usually want to use a hoop that is as close to the finished design size as what it's going to be, mostly because you won't get a lot of play in your stabilizer and you won't use more stabilizer than you need. But I'm gonna go ahead and just use this one. And I have a dime. Dime is Designs and Machine Embroidery. They're an embroidery supply company in the United States. And this is Class A Style 15. This is 130 yards of size 70. So this is a 70 weight and they are pre-wound. I use these things all the time. I really like them and they have yet to fail me. So they're great. I also use in my machine, Brother Machines and Baby Lock Machines are timed with organ needles at the factory. So if you have a brother or a baby lock and you're experiencing thread shredding or bubbles or loops and you don't know why, and you're using a needle other than an organ, I recommend giving these a try. If you have a brother or a baby lock, these came with your machine and these are the 7511 EBBR. I buy these by the hundred, they're in my Amazon store. Okay, I've got boxes and boxes of them here <laughs> because you, you never know. I am using Dimes Exquisite Thread. I don't have all of their colors, but the colors that I do have work with the fabric that I have. And that's about it. So if you have never used your embroidery machine before, just real quickly, it's still just a sewing machine. And especially if you have one that is a combo, it threads the same as your sewing machine. It's just that the arm is moving the fabric and the project 
as opposed to you doing it with your hands. My stabilizer is a no-show poly mesh and it is a cutaway, okay? That's what it sounds like. And this is gonna keep it nice and soft. It won't change the hand of the project at all. So I'm just gonna pop this in here right now. So I am not pre-cutting my pieces. On this particular part of the design, On because there's four sections, I'm gonna do it the old-fashioned way, the applique, the old-fashioned way. And that is for those of you that do not have cutting machines. But for the next three sections, well, two, there are applique in panel two and panel three. I will have pre-cut pieces that I can put in because it's just so much easier to do that. And those of you with cutting machines will want to see how that's done. So I have got white thread in here now. We'll be doing various color changes. And I do wanna show you, okay, so I already talked about my fabric that I'm using and I do have the glitter from Sweet Pea and I have got some 100% cotton batting. I have all four pieces here for the whole project and I'm gonna use this. You can use an 80-20. I, I recommend a low loft. That way it'll hang nice and it won't be all super puffy. Also, uh, I have my fabrics over here. I've got pieces of them over here for uh, the dark red, the light red, for the poinsettia leaves, the white, and the green. Um, I do wanna make mention for the white fabric, this is gonna go on a black background. And if you've got a dark background, you may want to use some tearaway stabilizer, a piece or two of it. So here, this is a piece of sulky easy tear. And I really, really like this stuff. This is my favorite. I'll link to this below. But when you go to tear this away from the outside of the placement line, it tears so clean. It is just fabulous. You don't get any of those little fibers or little bits and pieces that stick out on the underside of the thread. And I will use a tear away, or you can fold your fabric over on itself and use two layers but you're going to want something so that it's it makes your light fabric a little bit more opaque i won't be using it on the red or the green only on the white for the white flowers but you definitely would want to do that at, you know it's it's so disappointing when you have an applique project and you just don't think about that then you put something white on a dark background and you just you don't even really pay attention and then you get done with it and you look at it you stand back and you go oh my gosh i can see everything straight through that snowman body <laughs> and that's just you know an easy way to fix that that is fabric friendly is to use some tearaway stabilizer you can use cutaway as well if you want but the, if the cutaway is heavy it may change the hand of your project but tear away, this stuff is really light. It's called Easy Tear or Tear Easy. I'll have to look and it is by Sulky and it is my favorite. I have a whole bolt of it. All right, so I have put the design, the six by 10 design on my USB stick. This is a Power Tools with Thread USB stick. This is a pink one. We've got them in a lot of colors. I like to use these so that I know this has only my embroidery designs and not some other gunk on it that I don't need but I can always look on these and find my embroidery designs and I'm going to pop it into the side of the luminaire okay I've put the hoop in and I'm going to touch the screen to activate it and on the luminaire let's go over the menu items that we have again I apologize for my lawn guy outside of course he chooses this time right so the, we have em, we've got sewing embroidery disney and my design center i'm going to go to embroidery and here is where you get designs that are inside the machine or fonts or decorative fonts we've got frames we've got uh, motif stitches here's our disney we've got all kinds of stuff in here but there's a pocket and in brother and baby lock machines the pocket is for the memory so i'm going to touch that and that's external memory 
not something that's inside the machine. Now, if I was playing with this design and I saved it inside the machine, that's where I would get that right there. But here's the sign for USB and I'm gonna touch that. And let's find our cross and Christmas flowers, panel one right there, and I'm gonna hit set. Sometimes this design can be a little challenging when you first look at it and you don't understand. You think that you would do like this half and then this half, but that's not so. This is the whole top and we're stitching it sideways and that's why it can look a little confusing. All I'm gonna do is hit embroidery. So now we've gone from the editing mode into the embroidery mode and let's look at what we have. I'm using the W foot and on the luminaire, if you tap that, you're going to get a green crosshair down on your stabilizer. We don't need that in this case because the digitizer has already determined where everything is gonna be placed. It tells us which hoop we are using and what we need. This has 26,999 stitches. It has 30 color changes in it. This is why if you have a multi-needle, you definitely want to use it and it's gonna take 48 minutes to stitch out. That's 48 minutes of just stitching time. On my machine right here, it has a box and it says layout and underneath there is a box right there. That is a preview of what is about to stitch. And that particular stitch is the placement line for the batting. So I'm ready to go. My machine is ready to go. We've got a pretty green button right here that says it's ready to go. I've got a brand new bobbin. I've got good thread. We're ready. Oops, sorry guys. The next stitch I'm looking at in the in the preview is the tack down line and there's not another one after that. So that tells me that is the tack down line for not only the batting, but also the fabric. So this is the placement line for the batting. I'm gonna put my batting over it completely and make sure it is fully covered. If you're using a cotton batting, there's a school of thought that, you know, there's like a scrim on the back side. It feels like little bumps and they say they could be pimples and you don't wanna show your pimples, so pimples go down. And although it doesn't really matter in a wall hanging, you don't have to get all hung up on that, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure this is placed. Now my fabric is, it's got a, words are all over the place and they're in different directions, but it has a dominant direction on this. So I wanna go ahead Make sure your fabric is over everything by at least half an inch on all sides. You can peek up underneath, you can peek up here, and you can little peek from side to side and everything looks good. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and you don't need to tape it, you don't need to do anything because it's not going to go over an edge and get caught or anything, so. And do as I say, not as I do. You're not supposed to put your hands in the stitching field. Okay, the next stitch is the background crosshatch stitching. What you're supposed to do right now is remove the hoop and you wanna lift up your fabric and you would wanna take curved scissors. You want, curve, you want scissors that have a curve to them just like this, see? And you would want to take your scissors, you're gonna remove the hoop and take your scissors and trim kind of at an angle like this very close and get this batting out. However, I have a trimmer by George Ruler and I'll link to that below. I will do all of this trimming after we are finished with the entire design. The Trimmer by George allows you to trim your batting and your seam allowance all at the same time after it comes out of the hoop. So if you're not sure how to trim this away, I will show you when we go through, I'm gonna be trimming the applique pieces and I'll show you the trimming then, but I'm not gonna do that right now. If you don't have a trimmer by George, 
out and you're gonna be doing a lot of applique. This is like a tiling scene. If you're gonna be doing a lot of these, you may want to invest in a trimmer by George. It's the best thing since sliced bread and the weed eater. I need to do a thread color change. On my machine, I'm just going to trim the thread right here in the back and take this one and this tail and let it drop and hang over the front. And then I'm going to grab the black thread. I have a tree, thread tree in the back and I keep my tails tied up in that spring so they stay up out of the way. And this is the way I do it. I will just go ahead and twist them a couple of times, twist the tails together. I'm gonna make a big loop and tie them and just make a single knot like that. I do have my thread come from the top. I like to use the thread guide that's normally for the bobbin. I like it to run through there. That keeps everything nice and neat. Nothing's gonna get caught on something that it shouldn't. And then I unthread the needle and I will pull the thread from in front of the needle. I got my black thread on and now we're gonna go ahead and do the crosshatch stitching. Okay. This is just background quilting to give your square, your, uh, your panel some texture. Okay, the next stitch is the placement line for large part, the light part of the cross. Oh. Well, that worked that time. All right. And this is the placement line for the light part of the cross. All right, you're gonna take fabric piece B. This is, uh, I labeled it 1B. So put this on, make sure everything is covered. I might have it the wrong direction, let's see. Do I have it? Nope, I did have it the right direction. Make sure that all sides of the cross are covered, the entire placement line. Okay, there we go. All right. I'm gonna pull this down. I'm gonna leave a little bit more down here than I need, probably. All right, so this is the tack down line. This glitter, it's not vinyl, it's, it's a fabric, it's kind of like glitter felt almost. Uh, this is made by Sweet Pea, the company that makes this design. Whoa, we got close. <laughs> Maybe I didn't cut it big enough. Now we are going to trim away the outside of the applique. So let's pull the hoop. When I pull the hoop, I always put my hand on the arm and I just very gently pull it out. You don't want to have this move on you accidentally. If you do, you would have to start all over and then use your needle plus minus to jump ahead to that stitch. You want to use a firm surface in your lap so that there's no chance of your hoop popping apart and you're going to take your curved scissors and you want to get in there. I'm going to leave this on the bottom and I'm just going to lift and trim right next to the stitching. I cannot see where the stitching starts and stops. It's so sparkly. Oh my goodness. I can kind of see it here. And I like these Ginger scissors because they've got a sharp tip so I can get right down in there. It's exactly what I'm looking for. You definitely need to do this on a desk or an ironing board or something that's firm, you know, a table, or if you're gonna do it in your lap, 
A quilter's cut and press is real good for this. I'm using my Steady Betty. It's actually a woolly Betty. It's got wool on one side and uh, Steady Betty on the other. Okay, this is looking really good. I'm just going to leave it hang off down here. I've never sewn on this before, so I don't want to cut it too short. I'm just going to leave it be on there for a little bit. So, okay, that looks really good. Now, I'm using the same uh, glitter vinyl for both pieces, but I will use different color thread for the, uh, the darker side. Okay, and now is the placement line for the darker part of the cross. And when I said I'll use darker thread, that means the final satin stitching. Now I'm going to place my fabric directly over, fully covering the lines. And a little bit too much there. I think I cut this for the larger, the larger one. Okay, remove the hoop and trim away the fabric. That looks good. And put the hoop back in the machine. The next stitch is the placement line for the white flowers. So I have a silver in. I'm just going to leave it there. That's fine. If your embroidery machine does not automatically trim the jump threads, then as soon as your stitch is finished stitching, you would want to go ahead and trim those jump threads yourself. So I'm gonna put my fabric over all of it. Oh, look at that. So it looks a little, I didn't put that, normally I'll put this down first and let the placement line stitch over that. Let me go ahead and put this down. I'll just tear that out when I cut it. Okay. Okay, now we're gonna trim away the white fabric from around the flowers. I want you to take a look at this. Can you see the difference here between See how dark that is right there? That's what it would look like if I didn't have tear away behind the flowers. So it really can make a difference, just that little bit of tear away. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and trim this. Normally, I will put the tear away on before I do the placement line and then I tear it off and then do the fabric. But we can do this all at the same time, it's fine. This is definitely why you want to pre-cut your pieces if you can. If you can't, you need to consider getting a uh, Brother Scan and Cut. Okay, so I have trimmed away all of the surrounding fabric and, whoop, look, that wasn't very close right there, was it? I've got some more I can get down in there. Generally, your final satin stitch is like three millimeters in width, but you just need to be 
pretty close when you get into those points. All right, that looks pretty good. Put the hoop back in the machine. Next is our leaves. I'm gonna do a thread color change to green. Placement line for the leaves. I did not pre-cut a smaller square, so I'm just gonna go ahead and drop this on here. And then I'll trim it off. So here is the tack down line for the leaves. Okay, I'm gonna remove the hoop and trim away around outside the tack down line. Put the hoop back in the machine. And this is the placement line for the dark red leaves. I'm just gonna leave green thread in because it's not gonna show in, in the end anyway. Truthfully, you really don't have to do any thread color changes. You can do this all in white. And then at the end, the final satin stitching is where thread changes really matter. This is the dark red leaves. I'm gonna leave that green thread in until we get to the final satin stitching just to show you guys. It can make your life a lot easier. Okay, I'm gonna trim away the outside and then the next stitch is the veins inside of these leaves and I'm gonna use a metallic silver on that. Okay, I'm gonna put the hoop back in the machine and now I'm gonna do a thread color change. I have a King Star metallic silver. This is gorgeous. King Star is some of the best metallic thread that is out on the market. It is made in Japan and it's the same kind of thread that is used to make all those gorgeous kimonos with all that intricate, beautiful metallic designs on them. Let me thread. And I will show you, it's just gonna perform flawlessly. This stuff is like metal fibers that are metallic fibers that are surrounded around silk or rice paper or something. I don't know, it's crazy. All right, placement line for the light red flowers. And I'm gonna put my fabric over it and do the tack down. So I didn't put it far enough over to cover. And what I am going to do is I stop the machine. I'm going to cut. Let me back out a little bit so you can see. Okay. I'm just going to go ahead and get, so the, the stitch came all the way down here 
and I just didn't see that because of the white on here. I didn't even notice it. So I'm going to cut the thread. And I'm going to pull this out just a little bit and I'm going to trim this down here. Okay. Right above and that stitching. It doesn't matter. And now you push it back in. Hold on to the arm. I'm going to take my fabric and I'm going to put it over it again. So it's going to have two layers of red. Nobody will notice. I don't even worry about that. Let me put this like this, so, okay. Cover, make sure everything is covered. Okay, now I'm gonna go over here to my screen. This happens all the time when you're doing applique. You will not get your fabric over where it needs to be. I'm gonna go into my needle plus minus button and I am going to go up one. I'm, I'm looking for the blue there on that 3510 ISA cord. There, that starts the stitch again on that tack down for the red flower. Okay, so let me go just click OK. You can just start that stitch again. And now I'm going to do it one more time. And I'm glad I did it in white so I could see. There we go. If you make a mistake like that, that's okay. You just put some, you stop it, trim it up, and do it again. Okay, now I'm going to trim away both pieces of the fabric. Applique is very recoverable if you make a mistake <clears throat> where you didn't quite get all of the fabric uh, covering that, that placement line. You could even look at that. So now that opens up. You can see the veins from the darker fabric petals underneath. Very easy to recover. That's just a little nugget of information that helps you if you make a mistake. And, you know, having the power of knowledge to be able to say, oh, oops, I made a boo boo, but I can fix that. Um, that that will give you the confidence that you need to really kind of tackle any project. Yep, you can't even tell. It just looks wonderful. It's so fun to pull that back and see the applique underneath. <laughs> You don't have to make your designs inside the petals a different color. I just wanted to play with that metallic thread and do that. I thought it would be a nice sparkle against this glitter fabric. This glitter fabric does not shed glitter too terribly badly. I won't say it doesn't do it at all, but it's not crazy stupid like glitter vinyl where that stuff just goes everywhere. I tried to use some Glad Press and Seal on it to kind of hold to it and stitch through that. It doesn't stick. Glad Press and Seal does not stick on there. I tried. Kind of like, you know, when you're using that Minky or Cuddle Shannon fabrics, that stuff goes everywhere. So having Glad Press and Seal on top of that makes life a lot easier. Okay, that looks really good. I'm going to do a thread change to, back to the metallic to stitch the veins and the flowers on the light red. All right, we are on stitch number 18 out of 30, and there's another 20 minutes left to go to finish this design. And what's going to happen now is various final satin stitching all around all of the applique, the petals, the leaves, everything. So in the interest of my camera battery and the length of the video, I will get back to you when we are all finished. But I am just going to go through the rest of the process and change out my thread colors as needed based on what is 
the, what the screen is telling me to do and what we're going to stitch next. So we'll see you back here in a bit. When it comes to stitching the cross, you could either use two separate fabrics for a light side and a dark side, which is this piece right here, or you could use the same like I did and just use different color threads. And so that is what I'm going to do to differentiate between the two. I'm going to be using these two shades of silver gray. So this obviously is the dark one and this is the light one. Right now we are on stitch number 19 and that is the light side of the cross. That satin stitching is beautiful. Alrighty, I got a hot mess and some thread shredding that happened right here. When your machine does this, you're gonna hear something like a, it sounds like a snag happens underneath and then maybe you won't hear it again. But if you hear that snag sound, it's like my dad used to tell me, your car will tell you when something's wrong with it. You need to listen to it. So my machine told me with the snag sound that something was wrong. And now I can see that my needle has come unthreaded for, I'm not sure how that happened because I haven't removed the hoop, but I need to clean this up. So let me show you how to do that. Don't remove your project from the hoop. I did a cut already with the scissor button and it, the top thread didn't, didn't cut free. So the bobbin thread did cut free. Okay. Let's see what we got. Well, it doesn't look too bad on the back. I don't know what happened. Must have just been a top thread thing. I'm going to pull this through, make sure I don't have any shredding uh, or thin spots. And this looks okay. Everything looks fine. I'll go ahead and re-thread. And what I am going to do is take my scissors and just clean this up and get rid of anything that looks like it's going to distort the design at all. You don't have to go in and unpick everything unless you've just got such a mess in there that when it finishes, it wouldn't look right. But I think that that is okay. So I am on stitch 12 to 41 and I'm gonna back up about 20 stitches. I'm also going to check the bobbin and make sure that everything's okay with the bobbin. Yeah, everything looks fine. Whenever that happens, let me make sure nothing. I love that feature about the Luminaire to be able to just pop that open. I just want to look in here and make sure I don't have any goopies. So I've got some fuzz down in there. I'm going to go ahead and get this out with a lint brush. This is a freebie makeup brush I got a decade or more ago from Dillard's for buying a L'Oreal thing. Okay, these make great little brushes for this. Yeah. Oh yeah, we got lots of fuzz on there that needs to come out. Yeah, generally your machine will tell you when it needs a little love. And this one has a whole bunch of fuzz on it. So it doesn't hurt. Can that see the fuzz on there that doesn't hurt to uh, when it when that happens that's that's a sign I don't feel any burrs or anything on this and for those of you with a brother machine that has the option with embroidery the purple dot case is for embroidery the green dot case is for sewing so they they do make different cases but I'm just gonna get in here oh look at that there's a big chunk too that may have been the reason that that happened. So when you get that kind of thing happening, go ahead and inspect your machine and make sure, because this is a big, this is a big project. And so even if it was clean when you started, there's nothing that says that it didn't get fuzz and whatnot and threads um, all around in, you know, while you're doing it. 
But this looks really good. I think we should be okay now with no problems. But I always will, when I have that happen, I will always stop and inspect everything and make sure everything is good to go. And this goes back in. Like I said, it's a sewing machine. It just drops back in exactly the same way. Let me get this thing seated properly. There we go. That's good. I love not having to use a screwdriver to get this off. That's one of the best design features that Brother did with this uh, machine brand. All right. Machine model. Love it. Love it. All right. So let's give it a shot and see if everything's okay. I've cleaned up the design. I've checked the bobbin case. Cleaned that up. Your machine will tell you when it's not happy. All right. I'm going to go into needle plus minus and I'm going to back up about 20 stitches. 10, 20. Yeah, that should be good. Okay. And let's see how we do. Got a little loop. Well, it stitched it down in. It's fine. Oop. Sorry about that. All right, we have a sad baby error that says check and rethread the upper thread. I'm going to tell it okay. So we had a thread break, and I'm just going to take the thread from the top and pull it from the spool, and then bring it around and get it out of the track and see what happened. Okay. I don't know what happened, but it did. So I'm going to just run this through again. You know, sometimes you get a thin spot on threads, sometimes the planets don't align, whatever. Okay, I'm going to rethread the machine. And when that happens, you want to go into your needle plus minus menu and go back about 20 stitches. Just to be sure. Yeah, maybe we'll go back 30. Just to be sure we capture everything. Yeah, that looks good. I think what happened was right here in the middle of these points, you can hear that thunk thunk. Yeah, it's not happy. So it's going through some very, very dense stitching and fabric and all of that. So let me cut it. That's a trim underneath for the bobbin thread. Just to make sure everything's fine. Yeah, everything looks okay in there, I think. Now, see, it didn't make that noise like it was gonna, like something had caught. Let's look at the back. The back looks okay. Everything looks good. We've just got a bunch of stitching right here where all of these heavy satin stitches are coming together. So while we're on the back, I wanna point out to you see the bobbin thread okay you see the white bobbin thread that's pretty good that's that's an okay stitch right there but you definitely don't want to see solid red on the back okay that means your tension is not right maybe i'll slow the machine down for the rest of this particular stitch we're almost to the end of it i'm going to raise my presser foot make sure we're up so that the tension discs are released yeah we're just going through some seriously heavy stitching right here. That happens. And sometimes if you slow your machine down, that may help. I'm going to go into my settings, which looks like a page with the corner turned down. And right here, max embroidery speed, it's at 800 right now. I'm going to back it down to about 400, about half. Tell it okay. And when we get back to the next thread color, I'll bring it back up. All right, let's give it a go. We'll see. That 
that's that sound again of the thread shredding and there we go we have our little shredded thread problem here you can see that up in there like I said you'll get used to that sound it happens on every machine even though I've slowed it down it's just this design is so dense right here that we have to babysit it okay I'm gonna thread the needle and I'm gonna go into needle plus minus and back up 10 till it okay we'll keep going Got a tail that didn't get pulled down in. Grab it. Get rid of that. This is our last stitch. We are finished. Boy, this turned out beautiful. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Isn't that lovely? With the window, I get the sun shining on it and it sparkles. Just gorgeous. Remember now, don't cut this off. We need this here, okay, to make sure that it will get caught into the stitching when we sew all these panels together. So now we're going to go take it out of the hoop and trim it up. All right, we are ready to trim this up. As I mentioned earlier in the video, if you have a trimmer by George, this is where you would want to use it. The trimmer by George, there's, there's several different kinds. This is the trimmer by George 3.0, and it has a, I think it's a four and a half inch ruler. Let me see. Yes, four and a half inch ruler. The trimmer by George, the original one, and trimmer by George 2.0, their ruler is a little bit wider. It has a metal lip on the end of it right here, okay? That lip is right there on the edge of the ruler. And if you have an older model, they are identical. The beauty of this ruler is that this edge is going to prevent the rotary cutter from cutting into your project and trimming off your fabric edge that you need. So when you look at it from the front, it says Trimmer by George 3.0 right up here, but the numbers and whatnot look backwards and the lines, but you flip it over and everything looks correct this direction on the printing on the ruler. So. The way this works is I want to trim up the batting without cutting into the fabric on the top yet. Okay, so I've got some really long batting here. I'm going to go ahead and trim this up pretty close. Just rough cut this because I don't, this is a little bit longer than my trimmer by George can handle. Okay, when you use the trimmer by George, you need to use the 60 millimeter rotary cutter because I've got a couple of 45s here. If you have the 45, the button right here, these buttons, they get in the way and your, your blade can't reach the mat on the 45. That won't let it, it can't get down there, okay? And you, you'll get a bad cut and you'll be frustrated. You need the 60, the larger one, so that you can see now the button is well above the edge of the ruler, okay? And the blade will touch the mat cleanly. So the way this works is you just lift your fabric a little bit, not the, not the batting and not the stabilizer, and you push this metal lip up against it, okay? The metal lip is against the fabric. It's toward the fabric, not away from the fabric. All right, we want the metal lip toward the fabric, toward your project, and see how my focus fabric, it sits up kind of at a 90, like this. Let me turn so you guys can see the side. So we're gonna push it up like this, just like that, okay? And then you fold this over flat. Now, 
My background fabric is completely protected by the trimmer by George and it has left the stabilizer and the batting exposed. And I'm gonna take my ruler and start back here behind it and make a clean cut. And then this just pulls away and what I'm left with, my outer edge has not been cut and look how close that cut is to the seam line and it's perfect. This is a better job than I could do in the hoop. Much better job. So you just do all four sides like that. And the purpose of the lines on this side is so that when you finish trimming your batting and your stabilizer, you remove it and you just flop it down and I need a one half inch seam allowance and now I can get that because I'm matching the one half inch line with the tack down line for the batting and the fabric. And I trim this off, okay? So let's do the next one. You just lift your fabric, leave the batting and the stabilizer and snug that metal edge right up against the fabric and fold it over. You get these at hoopsisters.com. I'll put a link below, but I do love these things. This thing is the best thing since sliced bread and the weed eater because your life is just so much better. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing here. Now I'm gonna go through the stabilizer, the batting, and then I'll trim up the top. Let's see, push this up on here, right up against it, snug it up, fold it over, trim this off, fold that down, lay my ruler right back on top. Look how easy this is to do. You want to leave that half inch of your, your cross fabric because that's gonna go in the seam allowance, okay? And the last one, snug it up on there. Again, if you don't have one of these, you're gonna trim your, your batting in the hoop. But I recommend you get one of these. I think you will love it. You just have to figure out how to use it, so. All right, let me have that and trim that up. There we go. So our block is all trimmed. This is just gorgeous. Isn't that beautiful? Look how sparkly it is. I didn't think I'd like the glitter, but I think I love it. <laughs> all right, the next panel will be done on the multi-needle, and we are going to pre-cut our pieces using the Brothers Scan and Cut. All right, we'll talk to you soon. You guys go sew something. Bye.